Hello, everybody. Uh, we will just wait for one more minute for everyone to join, and we will start the session then. Good afternoon and welcome to today's session on adapting cloud computing. I am Prasanna, co-host of the event today. We all have adapted cloud computing with great dexterity in our life and work, be it messaging, photos, entertainment, healthcare, and education. But we are equally confused and clueless while exploring cloud computing for enterprises. This webinar is about the common and uncommon challenges enterprises face while adapting cloud computing. In today's session, practical solutions to overcome the challenges will also be given. Now, let me introduce today's presenter, Mr. Vishal Shah, CEO and co-founder of Cinesoft Technologies. He is also known as the seasoned technology stalwart and inventor of specific patented technologies, a writer, a serial entrepreneur, an investor, and importantly, a go-to guy to MSMEs. We will also have a question and answer session at the end of our meeting. Uh, Vishal sir, can you please take it ahead from here? Yeah, good afternoon, uh, everyone. And uh, first of all, uh, I would like to thank you all to uh, for, for your attending attendance in this particular webinar. Uh, I know it's a busy day, Thursday and it's an afternoon and uh, you have uh, shown keen interest in the webinar topic and uh, that is so encouraging for us. As uh, this is another uh, webinar uh, uh, we are doing from Cinesoft, as everyone knows and those who are uh, new to it, let me tell you, it is all practical, no theories type of webinar. Uh, we are not believing in uh, imparting theoretical knowledge and bore the attendees. So we are going to have completely practical session today. And uh, we are going to have a very in-depth understanding of what is the difference between consumer cloud and enterprise cloud and uh, what are the challenges and risks when we are trying to do something which we are not supposed to do. And I'm going to elaborate on that. So today we have uh, designed this particular webinar in a very, very uh, different way. What we have done is that uh, I'm going to explain what are the kind of major cloud computing adoptions, uh, you know, happening uh, by us at individual level as well as at enterprise level. After that, we will see uh, one profile. Um, um, we will connect to a computer which is using extensively the cloud computer called cloud computing. And then we will see what are the risks and challenges practically on that particular computer. And then uh, we, will another, we will have another computer which is having all uh, securities and implementation of practical solutions I'm going to suggest. And then we will, uh, re we will try to revive all those uh, uh, challenges and risks on that particular computer and we will see how easy or how important uh, uh, you know, it is uh, to solve those things as well as uh, to make sure that uh, your enterprise is not uh, taking any risks on cloud computing uh, by just going uh, open. You know, it, is, uh, it is necessary that cloud computing when we are adopting and when we are benefiting, we have to defend ourselves from the hazards of the cloud computing. So let me start uh, uh, with something very interesting. Of course, uh, when I'm going to ask you this question, you're going to find out it, uh, find it out very uh, irrelevant from the topic, but believe me, I'm going to help you in uh, having a good analogy uh, uh, with our topic. 
so let us imagine i mean we all um, most of most of the participants are from india so you know, we know how crazy how cricket crazy we are also and uh, in the vacation times and on the holiday times you know uh, uh, most of the times uh, in our localities uh, we go we pass by any street you know kids are playing cricket they play cricket uh, over a tennis ball or the, what they call a rubber ball and uh, you know uh, we see this scene everywhere wherever we live uh, in any corner of india so let us imagine there is a great uh, a player you know a cricketer a gully cricketer you know gully cricketer who plays great cricket on a tennis ball or rubber ball and uh, i have few questions uh, for this kind of uh, um, person you know uh, so i would like to you know uh, launch a poll i will tell prasanna when to launch the poll but let me give you a background let's say we want uh, this guy to play an international match okay he's 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 famous in his locality he's a great gully cricketer and uh, you know he uh, plays great you know he hits uh, uh, big shots on tennis ball and rubber ball and suddenly let's say he finds an opportunity to play an international game of cricket with season ball so um, i request all of you to participate in this poll and let me know what do you think about my questions given uh, this kind of person is uh, having an opportunity to uh, play cricket at the international level prasanna can you please launch the poll i would like to know about it yeah so uh, thank you for participating in this poll um, as uh, 72% of the people believe that he will not succeed in international match which is played over a season ball because he has a most of the times he has practiced on tennis ball or rubber balls uh, can he play an inter international match with his bat meant for hitting tennis ball uh 81% of the people say that he cannot use uh, you know a tennis ball uh, a bat which is designed for tennis ball he needs some uh, you know bat which is designed for a season ball and 94% of the people uh, believe that he cannot uh, he should not uh, you know play this match without pads helmets and guards so i think uh, we are all in the uh, we are all in the same boat uh, basically uh, this is all about now uh, deriving an analogy between this example and what we are going to discuss today so as prasanna uh, explained you know we are very very avid cloud user you know even our elders our senior citizens are also using cloud so much you know um they are storing their data on the uh, cloud we are storing our photos on the cloud we use lot of apps to book tickets so cloud computing is something which is part of our life i would say it is flowing in our blood you know so in our personal capacity we use gmail we use uh, book my show we use uh, uh, photos cloud to store our photos and what not so we are very very confident about using cloud in our personal capacity so it is just like we are a that great gully uh, player you know who knows cricket very well on the tennis ball and on the rubber ball but in our personal life you know we use cloud in our professional life when we try to use cloud there are so many challenges and it feels like you know 
it feels like a tennis ball player uh, is uh, entering in an international level match and which is played on a season ball that too carrying his uh, tennis ball uh, designed bat and that too without helmet without guard without uh, um, uh, pads so basically uh, this is an analogy and this is what exactly uh, is happening with us we are good at using cloud in our personal capacity we try to use the cloud same way uh, in our enterprises you know our enterprises have very serious data it's accounts data it's uh, uh, customer data it's about designs drawings documents uh, cost sheets what not and when we try to use our own cloud prowess i would say um in in enterprise environment we miserably fail or we are not very very confident so now we will see this why it is happening to us so uh, let me explain uh, what are the ways we normally use the cloud and then i will explain what are the challenges and risks then we'll connect to a computer system which is trying to use a uh, cloud for enterprise using all those uh, cloud applications and then we will understand what are the challenges and risks practically and then we will see how they can be resolved and what can be an ideal environment so of course i'm going to talk about risks and challenges and uh, i am going to talk about solution in more you know louder way so it's not about only explaining uh, risks and challenges and it is not going to be a theory at all so i'm going to share the uh, presentation and uh, we will understand how cloud computing can be adapted to the enterprise uh, uh, environment and uh, what are the precautions we have to take to take care of risks and challenges so we use cloud computing in our personal capacity and we try to use cloud computing for enterprise i mean for these purposes one is drive sharing you know we want to collaborate users distributed across the locations it could be dropbox google drive one drive and we want users to share the data collaborate on their data files using drive sharing then we use cloud backup for the off premise backup and for that purpose we have very good options like amazon s3 dropbox one drive google drive we know this and uh, we um, want to actually backup our enterprise data on these cloud backup systems then we use our email systems through g suite o365 godaddy whatever again it is also on the cloud we use our personal mails on this kind of service providers as well as we try to use our enterprise email system for the, with this kind of service providers then we uh, um, adopt saas software as a service kind of applications like crm erp hrms like we have zoho we have salesforce.com many erp solutions are all, also available like open erp and all that they are also available on uh cloud and we just have to pay per user per month for such erp applications and sometimes we have our own legacy applications and we try to put it on the cloud like our sap server may be put on the cloud or maybe our accounting erp homegrown erp can be installed on a data center in a server and then everybody accesses it or maybe you want to uh, use aws or azure which provides very good virtual servers on which your applications are hosted and then we actually uh try to um use them from anywhere um from anywhere and that's how we try to use cloud for enterprise purpose so these are the ways we use cloud in our personal capacity and we try to use cloud in enterprise environment also now let us understand what are the risks and challenges pertaining to this so when we use uh, a drive sharing when we use drive sharing and when we use uh, uh, the solutions like google drive dropbox there is a there is a challenge that user can stop pause or change the settings so we have to first make the settings on each and every user's computer and then user will have all liberty to stop pause or change the settings then these kind of uh, solutions are available on per year per user kind of cost okay it is not um in terms of per year per enterprise kind of cost 
and the space you get is also per user space. It is not per enterprise space. And the risks pertaining to drive sharing on these kind of solutions is absolutely clear, which is data theft over USB, email, internet, and whatnot. So these are the risks and these are the challenges. Users can make whatever changes they want. User, and it is expensive because it is per user per year, as well as there is no provision to prevent data theft over USB, email, and internet. People can do whatever they want. When we try to use SaaS applications, even users can access from unauthorized systems also. So let's say you have a Zoho CRM and uh, you might uh, uh, want that only your sales team should access it from their company given laptop, but they might share that password with someone else and they can also use this particular cloud system. Of course, there are certain provisions, but uh, we mostly don't know about those provisions and we will know about it. Again, when we are using SaaS application, when they are being accessed from anywhere, from any computer, um, there is a possibility of data theft over USB, email and internet. When we try to use cloud backup, you know, for an off-premise off -premise backup, in order to you know make sure that if our hardware crashes or our laptop is lost, we at least get the our all our data back. Here again, user has all discretion to change the backup destination. User, this is again per user per year kind of licensing for the backup agent. Uh, there are additional charges to restore the data. So when you take the backup on various service providers like AWS and all, when you want to restore the data, you need to pay the charges for that. And of course, uh, when user has complete control on your cloud backup, there is a possibility of data theft over USB, email and internet. When we use email services, um, let's say we use G Suite or any other service provider in that particular browser, you can switch, user can switch the, uh, his email system to personal email ID. And again, there is a possibility of data theft uh, leakage because he can always attach the things on his personal email ID, which is not in the purview of the organization. And when we try to access the applications or um, um, application hosting, like we put our applications on the data center or on the virtual servers like AWS. Uh, users can access those applications from anywhere over remote desktop or something like that, whichever way we have provided. And uh, that makes it very, very um, fragile and users can do whatever they want and they can actually steal the data also. And sometimes even unauthorized people can also access your applications, accounting data and whatnot. When we want to, uh, when we want to secure application hosting, uh, like by Citrix or by Inuvika kind of software, then there's a very very high licensing cost, and it makes it unaffordable. And when we want to put our applications on AWS or Google Cloud or Azure, uh, it is always prone to DWS and cybersecurity threats. You know, uh, hackers can also. Uh, uh, take advantage of that and they might have denial of service kind of attack as well as uh, any cybersecurity threats, it will be open because we have to keep that application open to the world. So these are the risks and challenges of cloud uh, adoption. Now what we have done is uh, we are going to connect to a computer system and we will actually see how drive sharing uh, uh, has certain risks and challenges, how SaaS applications have these challenges, cloud backup, everything. So we have got uh, our technical team together who have got access to um, a profile. Yeah, can we connect to a profile which is uh, completely open, you know, and they are using cloud computing, please. So now we are going to see this, we are connect to this particular profile of a computer user. Uh, which is uh, using cloud computing for anything and everything. And uh, we are going to see how uh, risky it is. So first of all, we'll log on to this particular computer system we have. Now, uh, let us uh, see what are the uh, applications installed. So let's say for drive sharing, uh, they have installed uh, Google Drive and OneDrive, 
they are seen on the desktop. Can you please highlight Google Drive, Dropbox, OneDrive? These applications are installed. Okay. Now these applications are installed. Now the first risk which I explained was about drive sharing. When we want to uh, uh, use you uh, users, uh, we want to share the data or backup the data on the cloud. Um, so now let's say we have a Google Drive. Just right click on that. First of all, we have to install all these applications. Now, if you see here, uh, we go to the settings. The user can pause the syncing. See this. This option is available with the user. So user can make sure that the backup does not happen. Then uh, user can also get into the settings and change what is to be backed up. So let's say if you have uh, uh, configured that um, on the Google Drive, desktop documents and pictures should be backed up. Now user can remove these uh, uh, folders also from the backup or user can add his own number of folders also, uh, whichever way he wants. So it may be possible that whatever data you want to backup from user's computer, probably uh, user has all, all liberty to change it. Similarly, the same problem can be with the OneDrive when you are using OneDrive as a backup system. So can we show that please? So here, if you see this, um, uh, syncing can be paused. We can go into the settings. Settings. And then here also we can change everything. We can change uh, uh, where this uh, data uh, will be there. Even user can unlink this PC. So if he unlinks the PC, whatever money we are paying for the cloud backup, probably we are not able to um, you know, uh, realize that whether data is going on it or not. Not only that, but also when we use Google Drive or OneDrive for drive sharing or data sharing in the browser, you know, can we go to the application now? in the browser, go to Google Drive application. So now, now when we log in, you know, the user would know the password of this particular Google Drive and he can actually log on from any computer and even in the worst scenario that password can be shared with the competitors and they can also access your data. Not only that, but also even user can change the account settings where this backup will happen. Can we go to the uh, system tray, please? So let's say if uh, we uh, go to the settings, here you can have a account change of the account also. Yeah, can you please go uh, show that? Here, add another account. Now, what if user adds another account of his personal? Then all your data will also be synced with his personal account. He does not need to steal the data. He has got all the data. And if he actually um, uh, shares that particular drive with the competitors, your data is completely open and it is um, vulnerable to the theft and uh, leakage, basically. So these are the practical problems pertaining to the drive sharing. Now, when we talk about cloud uh, SaaS application, can you just open zoho.com? Or any uh, CRM application, okay. We can just, user can just sign in from here and he can sign in from any computer, of course, uh, there are certain provisions, but nobody, very less people know about it. We, we will explain that. And now uh, this CRM application is available. Now user can even share his username and password uh, to a competitor and your computer is also accessing your CRM application. Now let's go to uh, email service. Um, can we, uh, yeah, before that, let us uh, see the application hosting. Uh, can we uh, now go to some uh, server? So now in this profile, we have kept one server, uh, which is installed with Tally ERP. So most of the times when we install Tally ERP uh, on the data center, we use remote desktop service. Okay. Uh, 
for accessing that Kali ERP. And that requires us to keep all our, uh, our server open on the public IP, you know, accessible on the public IP. And then when it is accessible on the public IP, uh, it can be a very, very uh, vulnerable, uh, vulnerable to the hackers who want to attempt to hack it or maybe uh, turn it down. So uh, it is going to be very difficult. So now we have connected to this MSTSC remote desktop. So when we put the uh, system on the uh, cloud like Azure or uh, Google Cloud or Amazon AWS, and we put our application on the cloud, we have to allow remote desktop or we have to provide from some, for some Citrix or Inuvika kind of virtualization systems, uh, but they are very expensive. So we are not talking about it. It may not be affordable for a small organization. So uh, this is how normally we have a remote desktop connection to our ERP system and uh, we keep our ERP system on public IP. And then most of the times it is attacked by the ransomware or it is uh, down because of DDoS attack and all these things happen. So these are the risks and challenges as I had explained. Uh, can we uh, log into the uh, browser, you know, just go to the Google browser, you know, and, uh, in this computer only Rajendra. Just open mail.google.com. Disconnect MSTSC. Yeah, in the same, same open profile, just open uh, mail.google.com. Now let's say you have subscribed to G Suite service for the enterprise. And maybe let's say you have subscribed to basic uh, solution. Then uh, it will also um, be allowing the user to log into any account, you know, he can log into any account. Just go to mail.google.com. So he can access your, uh, not this one, Rajendra, not this one. Uh, we want to show that he can log on to any account. In the same open profile, please show that. Yeah, here only open mail.google.com. So now this is an email. Now just go to this Google and add an account. So you can add to any account here. Just imagine you can add to any account. So your enterprise email system can be logged off and he can log into his personal account and then he can also take away the data. So these are the risks and challenges of a cloud computing system. These are the risks and challenges of a cloud computing system. So now I'm going to suggest the solution. Uh, before that, let me understand, uh, you know, who are there in this particular webinar? You know, are you uh, the people who belong to an enterprise and want to adopt cloud computing or are you the people who are giving consulting for the cloud computing? So I will request you to take this small uh, poll. Uh, Prasanna, can you please launch the poll, please? Yeah, so now uh, what we are seeing here is um, 
35 percent of the people are the owners or custodian of the enterprise uh, data who want to explore cloud computing and 65 percent of the people are the it professionals who are designing work from home solution kind of uh, security for the cloud computing so um, yes most i mean all of them are uh, the people who are exploring cloud computing as well as they are exploring uh, cloud computing in different capacity either as the owner or the custodian of the enterprise data or an it consultant who is advising uh, uh, companies to adopt cloud computing so great now we will launch another poll and we will understand your uh, perception about uh, what we um, you know uh, think about the risks and challenges i just explained and then we will move to the solution part of it prasanna can you please launch another poll so please answer this question uh, it will define the extent of cloud computing you have explored okay some people might not have explored for all the options some people have explored for so many options okay so uh, as i see that 41% of the people are adopting or exploring cloud computing adoption for all everything like cloud drive cloud backup cloud email cloud saas and cloud application hosting 9% are having cloud drive cloud backup 30% are um, you know almost uh, everything except application hosting so here uh, all of you are um, adopt exploring the adoption of the cloud uh, in one or another way and uh, so these risks are actually applying to the adoption of all these types of cloud computing now uh, we will understand uh, what uh, what are the solutions what could be the solutions so before i explain the uh, uh, solutions you know let me understand your concerns i have already explained risks and challenges okay now uh, you might have uh, been sensitive to certain risks and challenges so much and you might be so insensitive to certain risks and challenges so prasanna can we launch the uh, last poll uh, and then we will move to the solution so we understand what are their matter of concerns so as i see uh, 63% of the people have expressed that everything concerns them you know data leakage access by unauthorized users cyber attack users discretion to pause stop change backup and licensing cost and most of the people have uh, got one or another concern so now we are going to solve all these concerns i am going to propose a solution i will explain what that solution can be like 
and after that we have prepared one computer system which implements all these solutions together and we will see the effect of that solution and then we will again rerun all those risks and challenges and validate that all those risks and challenges are very well dealt with and taken care of so now let us uh, look at the solution part of it so this is what we suggest as a solution so let's let me explain this uh, this is your remote laptop user okay this is your remote laptop user which should be installed with some dlp client okay of course synosoft is a maker of the black box so we have used our own dlp client okay we have used our own dlp client you can use some other dlp client also if you want so uh it could be black box or it could be anything but it should be installed with some agent so this is the laptop part of it and this is your lan desktop part of it which is pre installed with again then agent agent is endpoint agent okay now there should be a vpn server okay so black box itself is a vpn server if it is not there in your network you can define one vpn router or a firewall inside your network so that users who are accessing the data cannot access it without vpn then there would be an application server it could be your application server of tally or erp whatever you have and that might be inside your office or you want to put it on the um, azure or uh, or amazon or whatever wherever it is so this application server is either on premise or it is on the dc data center or it is on the virtual server it is a virtual server and then there is third component which is virtualization application virtualization module this could be black box aaa black box is very a prominent player in application virtualization but yes uh, you can have many other virtualization software like citrix inuvika or such so so this is a solution where uh, one agent is installed on your laptops and desktops then you have one vpn server you have one virtualization application and then you have an application server either in premise or it is uh, somewhere on the, on the data center or on aws or wherever it is now i will explain how we are resolving the problem now these laptops of course this uh this lan based uh, desktops are directly connecting to this particular infrastructure and what you need to do is your saas application provider always gives you an option to bind it with an ip address or number of ips so you should take static ip connection from your office premise and you should make sure that your saas application is accessible only only and only on the static ip now i will see how the problem can be resolved now let's say your desktop applications the desktop users when they want to use saas application because they are in the same local area network and because that local area network has a static ip which is white listed in your saas server it they will be able to access it without any problems now this laptop user wants to access it from outside in that case he is going to connect through vpn server is not if he he tries to connect to this saas server directly see this he cannot connect it he cannot connect it because this saas application will not allow any request coming from any other ip other than the white listed ip address so this laptop user will directly connect from here he will connect to vpn server and he will become part of your network and then he will use your gateway to use this particular saas application and from his laptop he can access it this saas application through vpn only because this application will accept the request only from the networks which are white listed once this is done this particular agent you know you can have acronyms or any even black box agent is also a backup agent it will take the backup of this laptop directly to this cloud premise of the premise cloud backup and all these desktops and all these servers backup will also happen from the of the premise cloud this particular agent will make sure that this user does not have any influence on 
either this cloud backup client he cannot make any changes in the settings as well as he does not have any influence so that he can access your saas application or your um, uh, virtualized applications without vpn so let me summarize it again let me summarize it again you have laptop user desktop user it should be loaded with some endpoint agent black box is one of them you have one application virtualization system you have application server either installed in the office or it is installed outside in your data center or and then you have a file server and vpn server these people are directly in the local area network whenever this laptop users this laptop users have to connect they have to connect through vpn and your saas provider is configured such that it will access it will give access to only your ip address so even laptop user when they are in vpn uh, they can uh, access the saas application because the request would go from the white listed network only and then there should be a cloud backup system it could be google drive one drive even black box has also a cloud backup system which is of course per enterprise per year kind of charges it is not per user per year kind of charges so you can uh, contract any cloud backup system and this agent will take the backup of this cloud uh, over here and this agent should be such that it does not allow user to change any kind of settings and the most important problem with um, um with normal cloud backup systems which we saw they don't give you a feedback you know they don't tell you any alert if there is an error in the uh, backup so that this particular endpoint agent should also inform you about the backup health you know backup health so this is a suggested solution it is very cost effective solution of course we don't have uh, any idea about the cost of other solutions but uh, black box it is a very very cost effective solution one time cost uh, solution it 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 costs far far less than you know a cup of tea uh, per day for a user so now we will see how how this works okay so i request the team to connect to the computer which is completely secured you know with all these provisions and then we will run through all the possibilities of uh, uh, you know risk challenges and then we will see how uh, it is mitigating it yeah can you connect to a secured profile please so now we are connect to to a computer system 141 was an open profile 142 is the secured profile now we'll see this so this guy is a laptop user now we will verify whether black box agent is installed on this particular computer or not yes black box agent is installed you know uh, it could be any other agent also which is a device hardening agent so that uh, users is are restricted uh, not to be able to change any settings now we will see what kind of uh, now we will see whether he is the administrator of the system or not so this particular agent will necessarily remove administrative rights so user cannot make any changes you know just like that user was making lot of changes this user cannot make any changes he doesn't have access to anything now we'll see what data he has access to so here you see uh, he has access to his uh, uh, drive you know one drive which is there inside his laptop now let's say he wants to access his private cloud okay just like he is accessing google drive for sharing the data um similarly here we have created a private cloud with the solution i have suggested now let us see we go to black box agent or any vpn client agent you have installed no no not that one not that one rajendra keep this pc open this pc open now connect to vpn we want to load the drives so vpn will be connected now here if you see uh, while connecting the vpn user has no idea what username password ip address he has to enter everything is, is it is blind okay everything is blind 
for user so user cannot share it with anyone and you and if you cannot share it with anyone your data is not accessible to anyone now all the drives now imagine there are the drives google drives or one drives or whatever uh, here it is black box drive okay black box is also a private cloud system so all the drives are loaded over here and now user can work on all the drives the way he wants and uh, all these drives will automatically be backed up also without any control now in the system tray user does not have any choice you know he cannot do anything okay so what we have done here is we are able to share the drives to the users only and only on vpn and this particular agent has also disabled usb port it is vigiling the email system it is also controlling the internet which we will see how and uh, this is how this particular user is completely hardened and his drive sharing is only for the purpose of the business and he cannot really share all these drives or data to anybody else with a data leakage perspective now coming to the backup part we know that user cannot work on any other folder but all these folders and we have mapped only these folders with the cloud backup and once we have kept all these folders with the cloud backup mapped it user is not able to change it he doesn't have any liberty can you just open system tray yeah he doesn't have any liberty to change anything nothing he cannot do anything and that's why backup will be very reliable and it will happen always it will happen now uh, coming to the email services I, I, I will go to email services later um, let's say now the user has been uh, accessing the applications also okay so here please close this now he's connected to vpn so this is application virtualization software it is black box aaa you can also have citrix also uh, you can just double click on this so as soon as it is double click he will have virtual access of all your applications and just like citrix or inuvika uh, it will only uh, transfer the mouse clicks and uh, keyboard strokes so that it will be too fast you know so now this particular application if is if this user is accessing uh he can access it uh without any problems all these erp and everything he can access it very very cost effectively with very very low bandwidth also so this is how uh you don't have even if you are hosting anything on your cloud you know these applications will be done through virtualization so user will not have to go through remote desktop and all those kind of unsecured things again we do not have to keep these application servers open on internet because it is accessible only through vpn as you have noticed so you don't have to keep them open on your static ip also then uh, another challenge we saw was about the saas application so without vpn now let's say if we uh, open this particular crm.blackbox.in um, can we open crm.blackbox.in over vpn yeah crm.blackbox.in please open that so it is opening now disconnect the vpn this this is hosted on the cloud now disconnect the vpn now try to open it close this window and yeah now it is not going to be open because he is not on vpn though this particular crm.blackbox.in is hosted on a cloud it is a saas application but because we have bound that saas application server with our uh, static ip and user accesses it through vpn while he is accessing it through vpn he can access the crm while he is not accessing it through vpn he cannot access now because he does not know what is the vpn username password ip address he cannot configure vpn to any other system that means that he can access this particular crm which contains a lot of sensitive data about the customers of black box he can only access it from his office laptop or whatever infrastructure is allowed to him to do that so this is perfectly solve the problem now we will uh, see how uh, email services can be controlled okay so can we uh, uh, connect to a secured uh, uh, user and now we want to show them let's say if they want to 
access G Suite and what how how this problem can be resolved. So now when we use G Suite for enterprise, there is a big challenge. Okay, uh, you have uh, uh, you 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 can allow user to connect to your Gmail account, enterprise Gmail account, but can't stop user to access personal Gmail account from the same interface. We should we saw that in last uh, open profile, right? We could access our enterprise Gmail as well as we could add the account and we could um, uh, add the personal account also. Now here. Uh, we will try that. So this is also an hardened uh, computer. And now we will. So black box uh, agent is installed. Now go to Google Chrome. Open Google Gmail account. Let's say black box team account you open. Oh, now you try to use another account. So it will ask though the password. As you as soon as soon as you add the password, it will work. Now let's say you try to open this uh, Raju something email ID. Next, see it will give you an option that this account is not allowed to sign in because this black box agent is controlling. So your user will be able to access your G Suite account also only exclusively. He will not be able to access any other personal Gmail account while he is accessing your G Suite account. So all these things are. Very very important and they matter a lot. So now, uh, if we if I if I load the same slide again, uh, let me uh, explain how we have resolved the um, resolved all the all the things. Okay. So let me explain the same. Let let me open the same slide and then I will summarize on the solutions. So drive sharing user could not pause, stop, change the settings. The cost was a per enterprise per per uh, 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 per year, and possibility of data theft over USB email and internet was completely gone. We will see how. Uh, can we go to uh, uh, the happy hours part? Can we go to happy hours part, Rajendra? So now, uh, uh, just go to uh, this PC. So if you see here, all the drives and everything is loaded, and we'll see what is there in the internet. Just go to internet, open Dropbox. He cannot open Dropbox. Now open HDFC Bank. You can open HDFC Bank, so you can allow user to access whatever website you want him to access and whatever website you don't want him to access. Now, let's say if there is a situation where uh, user has to access Dropbox, let's say customer has called user and asked that you please uh, download the file from Dropbox. In that case, he will require to access Dropbox. Then this particular endpoint, can you go to this endpoint, please? It has a, a facility of happy hours. So as soon as happy hours is enabled, he can access Dropbox, but the drives will be automatically mount unmounted. We'll see this now. Now he can access Dropbox. It will open. Now let's see what data he has got. If you see here, all those drives are already unmounted. So while he's accessing Dropbox, any cloud application, he can only download the data. He cannot upload the data. Data uploading will happen in the background as set up by the organization. User has no control on that. Now, as soon as he's completed with the downloading of the Dropbox, he can very easily uh, go out of the happy hours. Now again, Dropbox cannot be opened. Cannot be opened. Now let's see what data he has access to. 
all the data is access to along with the downloads folder so whatever he has downloaded he can use it so this is how you can make sure that cloud computing you can get most benefit of the cloud computing at the same time you are not taking any risks or you are not subjected to any challenges and you are not losing anything on in terms of data loss leakage and theft now uh, we'll summarize on this particular solution part So this was the solution I suggested. So go for private cloud. You can have your own private cloud and that will have a cost minimization because then the cost of internet and everything would be quite less. Go for any good DLP client. Go for application virtualization like uh, um, Citrix or uh, even Blackbox AAA or uh, Inuvika which will minimize your licensing cost and you will not require RDP which is the most vulnerable to ransomware. Uh, go for device hardening with those uh, DLP clients. Go for blind VPN solutions where user does not know what IP address, what uh, password, what username he has to access. And then go for off-premise cloud backup systems which provide you per enterprise per year cost instead of per user per um, year cost. Like Google Drive offers 30 GB per user, okay? It is not it is not sufficient. If you have designs drawings which are two terabyte, you know, and you cannot uh, divide all that two terabyte among 30, 30 GB slots and provide it to each user, you know, it is not possible. So, um, you know, you need to uh, remodel your cloud computing adoption to an enterprise grade, not the way we were just playing on the tennis ball in the gully. You know, we have to prepare for it. We have to practice it. And we have to be guarded with helmet, guards, pads, everything. <clears throat> when we are exposing our enterprise data to our user from anywhere. So this is all about uh, the solutions uh, we suggest. I have uh, uh, explained the risks and challenges. I have also explained what could be the uh, solution and we have seen it uh, live on two different computers. One computer which was using cloud computing or adopting cloud computing the way we are doing. And we have also explained how uh, cloud computing should be. And we have also shown you uh, the way the cloud computing should be adopted. So now I um, open the discussion for the questions. Uh, I would like to take the questions. Yeah, you can please uh, post your questions and answers in your Q&A box. I will read them and uh, I will see that. In meanwhile, you are putting your questions. I request Prasanna to launch the poll, please. You can please write down your questions while you are taking the poll. I will study those questions and give you the answer. Yeah, so the poll results are 94%. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, this is so encouraging. Uh, I think the poll results are saying 94% of the people believe that all those risks and challenges can be mitigated by the solutions we suggested. Thank you so much. Uh, now I will uh, take up the questions one by one. Uh, Mr. Acharya is asking how frequently are black box software updates available? Do we have to subscribe it annually? 
uh, yes, uh, black box software updates are available and frequency depends on uh, various events in the enterprise world. Like if Microsoft is uh, making any large changes in its operating system, we have to update our endpoint agents uh, software and that's how update happens. Uh, another, uh, another instance would be if there is any threat or any new modus operandi, operandi in the security uh, uh, domain, uh, we have to learn that and we have to give that. And yes, you have to you have to uh, you have to actually um, subscribe them annually. So if you are uh, taking the AMC of the black box, it is included in that. Um, PRS is asking: Is there by any means the user can compromise the registry of the Windows system to uninstall or inactivate the black box agent? Um, see what this particular black box agent does is uh, and how it is configured. Uh, we, whenever the agent is installed, it gives us two options, whether user is an administrator or user is not the administrator. For 100% times, we have to select that user is not the administrator. And if you don't keep user as an administrator, he will not be in position when you don't uh, allow user as an administrator, he will not be in position to uh, manipulate anything related to black box agent. Mr. Acharya, uh, is asking why are such webinar recordings not available in your YouTube channel? Uh, this will definitely help. Uh, it is there. Uh, this webinar is happening for the first time and this recording will be uploaded on the YouTube channel. Uh, I'm glad you are looking for it. Uh, uh, last month in May, not last month, in May we had, uh, had a webinar on work from home. Uh, the recording is also available for um, that also on the YouTube channel. Uh, in last uh, one or two months, we did demo shows of the black box. And because it was particularly our product and very promotional thing, we did not uh, make the recordings available because it doesn't interest. So we are keeping the recording available on YouTube channel of all our knowledge sharing efforts. Uh, then Mr. Kanani is asking, what is security against, let me just uh, dispose the uh, uh, questions which are already answered so that I don't see them again and again. Yeah. Mr. Kanani is asking whenever new version of black box is available, what will be the, what will be the buyback option available for upgrading the new system in future? What is the frequency of the new model availability? New model is available every year. At the same time, all the models which are older than, not older than one and a half year are already upgraded with the new features. So most of the times, if you have recently purchased the black box, uh, you have all the new features along with that. And once the black box is more than 42 months old and up to 60 months, uh, we give a buyback offer where we provide a good value of the old black box against the new black box so that uh, um, you know you get the best return on investment on your black box. Then the question is, what is the security against uh, user deleting email from G Suite? Right. Uh, also backup for the uh, backup for the emails using GS uh, G suit. Uh, how about security when giving access on mobile phones? Very good question, sir. Uh, Mr. Kanani, actually, uh, uh, even if user is deleting the emails, if you have a black box device, it will shadow all your Gmails emails inside itself. So even if user has uh, deleted the emails, you will be able to recover it from black box about the question on mobile phone. Uh, black box has an endpoint agent uh, also available, uh, which is called MDO. It is available in two parts, MDO console and MDO, uh, MDO agent. And that supports Android and iOS uh, uh, operating systems. And it can also give you good protection against that. So all these features are also available in the mobile phone also. Uh, so it is possible. So I have asked, I have answered Mr. Acharya's question about buyback. Mr. Hirsch is asking, what if uh, before happy hours, the data copy mounted from the drive to local drive and then sent to the happy hours? Very good question. Uh, there is no local drive available. Uh, let me show you that. Uh, 
can you connect to the happy hours user please rajendra while he's connecting let me take another question the download drive z was accessible during the happy hours fantastic mr joseph we are going to see this now so so what mr joseph is asking that download drive was available so what if user copies the confidential data in download drive then connects to the happy hours and then uploads that drive fantastic let's see that <clears throat> one moment yeah now uh, rajendra just open the this pc so here you see um, you are in happy hours you have download folders also as well as all your confidential data now try to copy something from um, uh, one uh, confidential folder or classified folders to download folder copy this file to download folder it will not be happening see so mr joseph and uh, you know everyone else who asked this question uh, let me explain this particular download folder is a read only folder mr harsh and mr anderson uh, it is a read only folder basically so um, while the user is accessing the classified data he will not be able to copy anything to the download folder but he will be able to copy anything from the download folder to the classified data when he is in happy hours uh, he does not have access to the classified folders and he has only access to the download folder only at that time that user can download the data in in the download folder i hope uh, it is answered Uh, i have purchased black box aaa per user cost however your presentation show says it is not per user cost okay uh, see what i meant was that it is per user per year cost what you have paid is per user cost which is one time cost you know when you go to google uh, drive or any kind of cloud backup system you are paying per user per year so 2500 rupees per user per year here you are paying only one time cost okay and per user cost is required because uh, it is one time cost so let's say 50 user cost will be different from 25 user cost that's it uh, so that is that is my answer to your query sir this is one time cost this is the only solution which is available on one time hi sir is there a centralized dashboard to check the backup report yes there is a centralized dashboard uh, which is not available with most of the cloud drive backup systems i will show you that one moment so this is a dashboard so whatever backup the uh, happens through black box backup agent you will get this dashboard also if you are subscribed to the black box cloud so let's say i am logging into it so let's say there are uh, laptops 19 lap oh, sorry uh, 22 laptops out of the 13 successful three are incomplete means they are in process zero uh, six errors so we can see what are those errors it could be some file sharing error or anything file access error and we can resolve it so it gives us the perfect uh, uh, dashboard for all our backup system i hope uh, i could answer your question mr shyam now coming to the next question can black box support windows 11 uh i will reserve this question to be answered because uh, we have not we have not yet evaluated it but let me um, i mean right now we are supporting windows 10 uh mr patel is asking give give training for managing black box client uh, after format reinstall black box client yes we have a pro, uh, we have a, a program called black box certified security professional you can enroll your uh, uh, it team for that particular program and if you are the black box customer 
uh, we will give it free of cost. And then after that, they can also appear in the examination. There is an assessment exam. If they clear, they will be endowed the certificate of black box certified professional also. How backup of black box device managed? Can it be managed at a remote site? Yes, you can manage it at remote site. Uh, um, uh, remote site is our site only, which is black box data center. So you can put that particular black box data to our black box cloud backup service, which is a data center only. Uh, Mr. Sarna is asking, can we have 100 terabyte storage in black box? Yes, why not? We recently sold one. Uh, I think it was 196 terabyte. How a black box secured Office uh, 365? How black box secure Office 365? Same way by hardening. Uh, so whether you use Office 365 or whatever, a device is hardened. So user can do limited things and he cannot take any kind of liberty. Even OneDrive, you can take the backup on the OneDrive also, um, uh, which is part of Office 365. And user cannot even make any changes to the settings, just like we had shown. Mr. Acharya is asking, can configuration file of previous black box device be imported into new black box model or everything need to be set up again? It depends what is the, what is the generation difference between the two boxes. So if the box is uh, seven year old, uh, of course we cannot do that. But if box is just one, one year, two year, three year old max, uh, and it is of the same generation, we can simply import the configuration file. So it depends what are the generation gaps between both the devices. While logging to happy hours, other user login files will be opened like that only? No, no, no. When, when user logs into happy hours, even clipboard will be cleared, all the files will be closed, and uh, then only happy hours will be opened. Otherwise user can just clipboard um, entire content and then post it in some other uh, application in happy hours. So it will not, all the files will be closed. So if there are any files open, when you enter the happy hours, it will forcefully close all the files. Mr. Patel, how much time take for one TB black box cloud backup? It depends on your internet connectivity, uh, but when it is a one terabyte cloud backup, uh, it takes three to four days on a good broadband connectivity. Uh, after one terabyte backup happens, you know, then it only sends incremental backup. So then it does not take much time. And the cloud backup of the black box happens every two hours. So it doesn't have to carry a lot of data because in two hours time, users have worked on limited files and those limited number of incremental files are transferred. So it is very efficient in that way, Mr. Patel. So I think we are able to answer all the questions. Uh, we have overshot this particular webinar for 14 minutes. Uh, we can even do it for one or two minutes if everyone permits. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, Mr. Rakesh Sonavane is asking that you should keep, uh, 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 you know, the support persons on the public holidays for emergency. So Mr. Sonavane, well, let me tell you, we have different packages of the support. The lowest package of the support is basically for um, uh, six days a week, barring public holidays and Sundays. In case you have emergencies on the holidays, you can always subscribe to the higher package. Uh, which gives you uh, all day access, 24 by seven access to the support. But for that purpose, uh, you need to take another AMC, you know, if you have such requirements. Yeah, any other questions, please? Will this webinar be uploaded on the YouTube channel? We need to share it with our word office. Yes, this will be uploaded on the YouTube channel, of course. Uh, there is another webinar also on our YouTube channel, which is work from home. Uh, last May we had done and in that also we had covered many of the things which are required for work from home, Mr. Acharya, in case you want to upload. Mr. Keur is asking how much time take for one TB cloud backup. I have already answered on a good broadband three to four days and uh, it depends on your internet connectivity. And once one terabyte backup happens, only incremental files will be transferred. So it will not take much time because it takes backup every two years, two, two hours. 
yeah so i think it's time to say goodbye thank you very much uh, for taking out time and uh, showing interest in our knowledge sharing sessions uh, next one we will come up with another session and uh, we will see uh, what problem we are facing uh, on day to day basis we will explore that and we will try to find out a good solution for that and show you thank you so much for attending over to you prasanna thank you sir uh thank you everyone for actually attending the session we appreciate you being here i would request you to fill the survey form uh, while you exit and um, thank you for joining again and have a rest have a great day ahead thank you thank you very much thank you